Hey, let's say good morning to Maria Lawrence from Hospice. She joins us via telephone for a short segment here to open up the program. Maria, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you, gentlemen? We are all quite well and in good spirits. I, I can hear that. I can hear that. You're just very jovial this morning. I'm sorry uh, I can't be there to join you in person, but, um, but yeah, you sound, you sound great. You will have a Senator Capito appearance this morning to celebrate uh, 10 special years at hospice. Yeah, we do. We do. Um, so we um, invited Senator Capito to join with us today as we celebrate, as you uh, pointed out, our 10th anniversary on this campus. Um, and uh, should be a, a lovely day. We're, we're set up outside Um we have a tent because, you know, knock on wood, you just never know what's going to happen. And, um, yeah, so um, we expect her um, around 11 a.m., and we certainly invite the community to join us as well. Um, short little program. Um, the senator will speak. Um, our CEO, Nikki Bigirelli, will say a few words. Um, we have an invocation by our longtime board chair and and now retired rector at Trinity Episcopal Church, G.T. Schramm, and um, and a special uh, little piece of the event, we have asked um, a a person from the community whose husband actually passed in the inpatient facility um, to come and say a few words about the impact that um, that the inpatient facility, the staff, the care she received, that her family received there, um, uh, we thought that that was kind of important to sort of include what I like to call a mission moment um, for the event. So, yeah, so we think, you know, maybe 30, 40 minutes or so um, invited the community. We did not ask for our SVPs, so there may be 10 people here or there may be 150 people here. So <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. Maria, uh, many folks have uh, seen the inpatient facility. You've had several tours. Uh, will there be an opportunity today, for, if anybody has not been through the inpatient facility, to actually do a short tour? Yeah, I think we can do that, Bill. Um, you know, certainly not not necessarily on the agenda, but if somebody wants to do that, we certainly want to give um, give them the opportunity um, to be able to do that. We also put together a nice little um, PowerPoint. Uh, shout out to um, Ashley, our executive assistant here, um, who actually dug through um, a lot of photos and um, and put together um, PowerPoint slideshow, if you will, from mainly from the construction phase. There are some um, fabulous photos of the Admiral in there, um, uh, in that PowerPoint as well. Um, We also asked, um, you know, our builders from W. Harley Miller Contractors, Jim and Diane Daly, Diane now a a board member, um, but also Bill Cornett, who was our project supervisor at the time to come by um, and visit with us because, um, you know, as Bill will recall, it certainly took a village um, to build this fabulous campus. And, um, you know, we're very proud, but mostly um, really very happy because of the care that we've been able to offer um, for the past 10 years that that had not been available previously. Maria, if uh, I think the our inpatient facility uh, here in Berkeley County, Jefferson County, uh, will match up exceptionally favorable with any other similar facility in the United States. It is truly a magnificent facility. Uh, a quick it- a quick story on my own, uh, pointing fingers at me. I was county commissioner at the time, and you, Margaret, and others approached it. Do you think this is a good idea? Uh, we need needs as much support as you can get. I listened to it, and I said, I think it's a lousy idea uh, because we have the hospital. We have other facilities. There's no reason for that. And to uh, to Margaret's credit uh, and your credit, uh, went back and compiled a lot of information throughout the country and came back and sat down and convinced me. And 
and I was wrong the first time. It is a it is facility that has served the community exceptionally well and will continue to do so. It is not only is the building itself uh, extremely caring in everything it does, but the people even more so. Uh, it is a jewel for folks in there and their families in their, their final days or weeks uh, to, uh, to be able to reside in some place as nice as our inpatient facility. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, for that. And um, gentlemen, uh, Mr. Gilstrap and Rob, you uh, heard it here first. The Admiral admitting he was wrong about something. I was wrong, How, yep. Mm -hmm. I'm kidding. I'm kidding you, of course. Um, Beautiful. Uh, just to that point, though, 3,000 patients have been served in these 10 years. So um, at the inpatient facility, that's not total, um, obviously, but 3,000 folks who would not have had that opportunity and the difference, uh, you make a really good point. We have wonderful relationships with our area hospitals, um, but it, it is a different kind of care focused on comfort, focused on, um, you know, on what people want to experience at the end of their lives. If we always tell folks, if you can't be home, which is where most people want to be when they pass, then you need to be here um, because it is, a, as Bill says, just an extraordinary experience um, of caring people um, who have really um, used that compassionate care um, for 3,000 folks in the past 10 years. And, and BZ Care says uh, in the comments, added a word which is very, very appropriate, and that is peaceful, and it is very peaceful. And what is, what is the criteria between uh, inpatient and home care for, uh, for the hospice care? Excellent, excellent question, John. So, um, you know, generally speaking, obviously, do the math in your head. 3,000 folks, people here are here for generally very short, short stays. Um, so the criteria includes we have three levels of care that we offer um, inpatient care, which is similar to um, hospital care. We have respite care that's offered to families who need a break, um, who can't, for whatever reason, maybe they have a graduation or a, a funeral, or the in, in one of the cases, the other spouse is actually hospitalized, and they need a place for their loved one to be for a short period of time. So inpatient, like the hospital care, um, respite, like a break, and the third kind is residential care, which, again, short generally short periods of time, um, but, um, but you know, a, a more, more weeks than necessarily days. So those are the three types of care that we offer, um, you know, very hands-on with staff. You know, we have a, you know, obviously fully trained RNs. We have a full-time physician who rounds every day. We have certified nursing assistants. We have chaplaincy. You know, our chaplains can go in. We have social workers. We have volunteers. Bill, have you met our our new volunteer um, uh, support, not support, but therapy dogs? We have several dogs and a parrot um, who go in and visit with patients. So, um, so yeah, so that's a great question. Hope I answered somewhat adequately. And Maria, if you could, uh, before we say goodbye, recap what you're doing today and the hours of operation. Sure, sure. Thank you. Um, so at 11 a.m., uh, we will welcome Senator Capito to help us um, kick off our, our celebration of 10 years on this campus. Um, obviously, the community is invited to come out, um, visit with her, take a look, um, Come to the inpatient facility. Um, I'll, I'll offer you a tour if you have not been so before. Um, after the, the brief remarks by her um, and some staff and um, our community member, Patty Martin, 
Um, we have a little reception inside for folks to join us as well. So 11 a.m. Um, on the hospice campus, 330 Hospice Lane in Kearneysville. Thank you, Maria. Great to talk with you this morning. Absolutely. Talk uh, to you Wednesday. Thanks, Maria. Happy Monday Eclipse mm-hmm. Day.